Welcome, my name is Andreas Dreger and you are watching the Systems Biology channel. In this video, we will discuss where we can find Systems Biology models, how to load them into SPML Simulator and how to use them to run a simulation. Several online repositories exist that house Systems Biology models. Let's explore how we can get a dynamic model of the human hepatocytes from an online database in SPML format that Bucher and colleagues published in 2011 in BMC Systems Biology. We open a web browser and enter biomodels.net in the address bar, which redirects us to a website hosted at the European Bioinformatics Institute, or EBI. Since we are interested in a specific model, we can simply enter some keywords in the search field, such as Bucher, hepatocytes, and click at the magnifying glass. And here's the result with model identifier number 328. The tab files provide several downloads to us, of which the model file in SBML format is most interesting to us for now, which is listed at the top. Note that SBML files can have various file extensions. Most common are .spml or, as it is here, .xml. One click and we should have the model in our downloads folder. To open the model, we just drag the downloaded SPML file and drop it into SPML Simulator. In the Model tab, we can explore the structure of the model in a tree view, including all of its components, such as compartments, species, parameters or reactions. The search bar at the bottom allows us to look for specific model elements, such as all Michaelis constants or KM values. The Graph tab visually displays the model, which looks like this. In this case, the authors did not embed any layout information into their model, so SPML Simulator has to automatically generate a display following the SPGN guidelines, which is the Systems Biology Graphical Notation. Next, let's run a simulation. At the bottom is a control panel, where we can adjust how the simulation should be performed for instance, with 300 steps. We can also select the solver that calculates the results for us. The default, Rosenbrock, is the most precise method and solves the broadest range of models. But in many cases, other solvers can be much faster. By clicking the Run button at the top, the calculation starts. On the left panel, in the Simulation tab, we can select which model components to plot for instance, all reactive species. Once the computation has finished, we can see all selected model components in the plot area. If you like, we can change some parameters of the model in the panel to the left. We can, for instance, set a new value for this KM parameter and see how the results of the simulation change after rerunning the model. If we would now load a time course data set into SPML Simulator, we could apply a plethora of heuristic optimization methods to automatically estimate model parameters, but this is a topic for a subsequent tutorial. Let us switch off the status bar and controls in the view menu, because we don't need them anymore. Now, the tab Computer Data has become active, where we can see the simulated time course from the plot in tabular format. With the availability of this dataset, the graph view has now also updated and automatically maps the simulated data onto the generated network. We can play these data as a movie, zoom in and pan in the system around while it is running. The controls at the bottom adjust the properties of this animation. We'll dive deeper into more details of this feature in follow-up video tutorials. In this video, we have walked through how to load a model and run a simulation using SPML Simulator. In the next video, we will explore how to create dynamic videos of metabolic networks that we can use for visual analytics or embed within scientific presentations. Thanks for watching the Systems Biology channel. 